Is cutting off blood circulation really an effective way to build muscle? I mean, yeah, obviously the pump is insane, but what's really going on inside the body when we use this technique? Because that's all it really is, right? Blood flow restriction training or occlusion training is a technique that helps us increase the intensity of our workouts, just like drop sets or supersets, by increasing the amount of metabolic stress we induce in a single working set. Well guys, I'm Scott from MuscularStrength.com and today we're going to take a closer look at BFI training to see what the science has to say about whether or not you can build more muscle and strength with this technique compared to traditional training. But even if it can, is this even really that safe to do? I mean, you're basically using a tourniquet to trap blood in an area you're trying to train. Well, it should go without saying that you should first obviously consult your physician to ensure you don't have any pre-existing blood pressure complications before trying this technique. And even though I'm sure I could easily find before and after photos and testimonials from people swearing that BFI training works wonders, in today's video, we're gonna let the science do the talking. But before we get started, my friends over at Iron Bull Strength wanna give away 10 pairs of occlusion training bands, and to win is easy. All you have to do is two things. Number one, follow Iron Bull Strength on Instagram and leave a comment on this photo. And number two, and this is the most important, guys, comment below who your favorite Power Ranger is and why, and if you think the original Power Rangers are way better than all that bullshit that came out after that from like when we were kids to after we weren't kids anymore because it got really dumb. Anyways, <laughs> basically have some fun. <laughs> I'll pick the winners by the end of the week and I hope that if you do win, you'll let me know how your training goes over the next four to six weeks, whether it's good or bad. And while you're there, be sure to check out everything else Iron Bull Strength has to offer. If you need things like lock collars or wrist wraps or ab mats, or if you wanna increase your grip strength by using their fat grips. And you can use my code MS10 for 10% off the entire site. So, blood flow restriction training. What is it exactly? Well, as I briefly mentioned already, it's a technique to increase the intensity of your working sets where you will be able to, in theory, build the same amount or just as much muscle training with lighter weight as compared to traditional weight training. But this doesn't replace heavy lifting, guys. It's just a technique. For example, we all know that in order to achieve muscle hypertrophy or muscle gains, our working set should be around eight to 10 reps using less than 80% of your one rep max. But the majority of blood flow restriction exercise and training uses lower intensity, closer to like 20 to 40% of your one rep max and closer to 15 to 30 reps per set. But before we can get into any conclusive evidence, I think we first need to talk about blood circulation so you can 100% grasp the concept BFI training is built upon. Yes, science. You see guys, the human body circulates blood in two ways. The first is when blood is pumped out of the heart and into the muscles and organs via the arteries, and the arteries then carry this clean, oxygenated blood wherever it needs to go. That's why arteries appear red. But you can't really see them because they're buried deep underneath the skin, and for good reason, too. Arteries are characterized by high blood pressure, which is why slicing them open is generally not a good thing to do. I'm sure you've all seen war movies where a soldier gets critically injured and blood just like starts spurting out everywhere. Well, that's a severed artery and that's why they're buried deep. But veins are a different story. Veins carry deoxygenated blood or venous blood, which I probably butchered that, from the muscles and organs back to the heart and lungs. So how does this relate to BFI training? Well, let me explain. You see, BFI training involves using a band to cut off venous blood flow or the flow of blood from veins returning deoxygenated blood back to your heart while maintaining arterial blood flow into the muscle. Are you with me so far? Okay, good. Now here's the theory as to why this is effective when trying to build muscle. By cutting off the venous blood flow, this will lead to metabolite buildup within that particular muscle, or in this case, the biceps. Also, just to recap, metabolites are the substances, generally waste products, produced as a result of muscular contraction. Now, normally what happens is that blood is able to flow into the muscle during training, and as metabolites build up, 
They're carried away once your set is over, allowing the muscle to recover from fatigue. And one metabolite in particular, inorganic phosphate, which increases during your set due to breakdown of creatine phosphate, appears to be a major cause of muscle fatigue. This is why creatine is often used by athletes that train with a lot of intensity. The stored creatine phosphate in the skeletal muscle helps resynthesize ADP back into ATP, but that's a video for another day. However, with blood flow restriction training, because these metabolites can't escape the muscle once the set is over, the result is more metabolic stress on the muscle during the next three to four sets, which in theory should lead to faster training adaptations and thus more muscle gains. Also, because we're only restricting venous blood flow and not arterial, this method is safe. In fact, if you take a look at this study, it's been proven that with heavy resistance training or 80 to 100% of your one rep max, mean arterial blood pressure has been shown to more than double with heart rates reaching maximum levels. However, research on low intensity blood flow restriction training shows an increase in blood pressure and heart rate by only about 11 to 13 percent. As such, traditional resistance exercise results in much greater blood pressure, heart rate, and even cardiac output changes than low intensity BFR training. Just make sure you don't crank the bands too tight though, okay? I would say on a scale of one to 10, bring them to about a six to seven, and it's better to be a little too loose than a little too tight. But whatever, right? It's safe. But how do we prove that BFI training actually works to help build more muscle? Well, before we can dive into all that, if you're enjoying the video so far, make sure you tap that subscribe button for more great content like this. And in a never ending attempt to get YouTube's algorithm to kick in, please also take a moment to tap that like button. I really appreciate it because it's an easy thing to do and it helps out a lot. All right guys, so what does the science have to say surrounding this type of training? Well, let's examine this study from massmember.com. Two groups of powerlifters trained front squats for six and a half weeks. The group doing front squats with blood flow restriction used approximately 24% of their one rep max for week one and approximately 31% of their one rep max for week three. And they performed four sets with 30 seconds between sets in each low load BFI session with the first and last sets taken to voluntary failure and rep targets of 15 and 12 reps for sets two and three and the blood flow restriction reps remained on between sets. Now the group doing heavier front squats performed six to seven sets of one to six reps with 60 to 85% of their one rep max and details of each session wasn't provided, but the training programs were designed by the national team coaches and were part of the lifters annual periodized plan. So overall, the group performed more sets of front squats in each session, but it doesn't seem like they were taking any of their sets till failure. But what was the overall result? Well, in the group performing blood flow restriction training, type one or slow twitch muscle fibers increased in size by roughly 12%, while type two or fast twitch muscle fibers didn't really grow at all. Actually, there was zero growth, which provided clear evidence of fiber type specific hypertrophy, which I think is really cool. While the group performing traditional heavier training failed to have any growth at all. Also, and this is super important, the group training with blood flow restriction training had an increase in myonuclei in their type one muscle fibers as well. So is this conclusive evidence that BFI training is king when it comes to muscle growth? Well, I don't think we should jump to that conclusion quite yet, guys. If you remember, in my nuclei overload video, I talked about our natural potential as athletes and that maybe our current plateaus are due to that we have exhausted what's capable in terms of muscle gains with our traditional ways of thinking about training. So to me, this study shows that basically a group of power lifters switched from heavy sets of one to six reps to nuclei overload training for six weeks. And when you think about it that way, I think it's fascinating that a study was able to prove without even really trying that nuclei overload training can be effective even in seasoned power lifters. And that muscle gain can be achieved with even just 24% to like 34% of your one rep max. And if we take a look back at the study from 2012, 
This chat concludes that various other studies on blood flow restriction training have proven that this technique also increases growth hormone as well. So by now, I'm positive quite a few of you are looking to try blood flow restriction training. So let me leave you with a few more tips in how to get started. Again, first, check with your physician for any pre-existing blood pressure complications because you can never be too careful. Then, pick which body part you want to try this on. I'm sure the majority of you will go for your arms, and if that's the case, always wrap just above the biceps. But if you want to train legs, always wrap your upper thigh just below your hip or groin. As for how often you should do it and your sets and reps, in an article written by Dr. Jacob Wilson, he recommends that you only utilize this method one to three times a week and complete four sets. 30 reps on set one, followed by three sets of 15 reps with 30 seconds of rest between sets using 20 to 40% of your one rep max, which is very close to the study we just talked about. Now, Dr. Wilson also recommends that you use blood flow restriction training as a finisher and on isolation type movements. I would suggest starting there as well. So for example, if you were training back and biceps, I would still perform my heavy working sets, but finish the overall workout with BFI training on a curl type movement for isolation on the biceps. Also guys, I did try BFI training for a few weeks and I want to add my own input here as well. Number one, you're going to feel like your abs are going to explode, all right? And you need to fight the urge to remove the bands. That's why it's better to have it a little too loose than a little too tight, all right? You have to leave them on for all four sets. Number two, you're going to be very vascular during your sets. That's because BFI training increases vasodilation, which is when the blood vessels expand for greater blood flow, and as a result, decreases blood pressure and increases your overall vascularity while exercising. Another thing to note is that the first set is going to feel super easy, okay? That's why you'll be able to complete 30 repetitions, but then on set two, with the same exact amount of weight, not so much because that's the entire point of blood flow restriction training, okay guys? We're increasing metabolic stress by preventing the venous blood from leaving the area. And lastly, it's a lot easier to find the right amount of pressure when wrapping your arms versus your legs. So don't be surprised if you need to readjust your leg straps a few times when you first start out. Oh, and one last thing. I thought it was really interesting that Dr. Wilson also mentioned in his article that because BFR causes very little muscle damage, it can be used during deloading periods to supplement as much as 60% of the high intensity workload. That way athletes can continue to progress while allowing their joints and injuries to heal. Well, hopefully not injuries, but regardless, it's really good for that. So if you're due for a deload week, this could be right up your alley. I hope you guys learned a lot in today's video, and don't forget to enter my contest if you'd like to get your hands on a pair of blood flow restriction training bands from Iron Bull Strength. Be sure to tap that like button, and as always, more good stuff coming soon. See ya. Pretty crazy video, right guys? I thought what was the best part of this video was how it can relate to nuclei overload training, and if you did not see that video yet, it's over here and it's freaking awesome and you're gonna learn a lot when you watch it. And if you enjoy these science type videos, let me know down below because I'm really enjoying making them. And if you wanna read the article version of this video or the nuclei video, just go down below, click the link, download my app, and you'll see it right there. Bye guys.